Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to the Western Hemisphere Colloquium on Geometry and Physics. Uh, the format for the talk is an hour talk followed by 15 minutes for Q&A. If you have questions, uh, feel free to either just ask them or uh, put them in the chat. I'll aggregate questions and uh, deliver them to the, uh, to the speaker. So without further ado, let me introduce today's speaker, John Farden, who will talk on universally counting curves and Calabi out reforms. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be able to have this opportunity to give this talk. I'll share my screen. That's the right one. Yes. Okay. Right. So I probably don't have to introduce to this audience the idea of enumerating curves and algebraic varieties. That's something we have many ways of doing. Um, this talk is going to be about the uh, the case of threefolds, complex threefolds, always smooth, and mo usually Calabial, uh, but for a lot of the discussion that won't be so relevant. So we're just interested in enumerating curves in, in, in a given, given Calabial threefold X, just count one dimensional sub varieties in some way. And, and there are lots of ways. Most of them come from some moduli space of, of curves with some, not just, not just cycles, but um, a map for a nodal curve into your space. That's the moduli space of stable maps here. Uh, maps from a compact nodal Riemann surface uh, into X, and more more algebraic uh, descriptions of curves, stable pairs. This notion was introduced by uh, Pandre, Pandey, and Thomas. Um, stable pair is some um, some object in uh, complex geometry, algebraic geometry, so sheaf with some some. Um, extra structure and you look at the moduli space of those, those sheaves, stable pairs, they're supported on, um, on curves. So both of these spaces, right, they have a forgetful map to, to the space of one cycles. And well, if, if the space of one cycles had a canonical fundamental class, then um, then, then maybe we just use that class to enumerate curves and, and, and we wouldn't care about any of these uh, more complicated spaces. But as far as we know, it, it doesn't. And so any choice of moduli space with canonical virtual fundamental cycle gives us a way of counting curves. And there's some basic properties to satisfy. So most of the ways of counting curves we have are, are invariant under deformation. So if you have a one parameter family of Calabria threefolds, then, then they have the same enumerative invariants because that one parameter family, that, that gives you a bordism between the, the moduli spaces. So their fundamental class is the same. Um, and there's also this property of uh, the functoriality under open embeddings. And that's a little bit harder to, um, to describe it enumeratively because it's not it's not really a property of um, the numbers you get out like deformation invariance is. It's a property of these moduli spaces. And basically what it says is that um, if you're looking at the structure of one of these spaces near a given curve, then, well, it doesn't care about any of the rest of the X. It only cares about the germ of X near, near that curve. So one way of saying that would be, I guess, that if you have any open subset of X, you can look at the cycles which are contained in that open subset called Z of U. And if you have some moduli space of, of curves, uh, then you can do the same thing here, and this should be a pullback square. And by E of X, I mean this moduli space equipped with um, its sort of its derived structure, its its um, perfect obstruction theory, whatever thing is giving rise to its um, 
its enumerative content. Okay, so the first observation I want to make, and sort of a trivial observation, is that there's a universal invariant with with um, with these these three properties. So, what three properties? Deformation invariance, um, functoriality under open embeddings, and you know being associated to some cycle on on on, on this space. And that universal invariant is valued in the following sort of tautological group, uh, the co-kernel of this map. So let me explain what this complex is. So this is the direct sum over all um, Calabial threefolds. I'll ignore Calabial for now. It's direct sum over all complex threefolds of so the z of x is the space of one cycles in x. And H0 with compact support, that's just another um, another way of saying uh, locally constant functions. And we might as well say integral, uh, in integer value functions. So this is the group of locally constant integer value functions um, of compact support on the space of cycles on, on, any, on all Calabi occupants. So in other words, a formal, uh, a, a, an element here, it's a formal linear combination of connected components of spaces of cycles on complex theories. That's what it is. Now this, I haven't described uh, what we're gonna quotient by, but I'll describe that next. The quotient, it's sort of a Grotendieck group of cycles they, I, uh, that's that's what i've been calling it um it's it's very similar idea to this grotendieck ring of varieties where you take a free abelian group on all algebraic varieties and uh, you quotient by some relations you know if you have some open subset then of x then an x is equal to the, su the sum of the open subset and this complement so we're, we're, we're just going to do something similar but um, instead of using varieties, we're, we're going to use um, cycles, spaces of cycles and complex uh, threefolds. Okay, so the thing we quotient by is exactly um, and sort of imposing deformation invariance. So if you have a, this is the direct sum over all uh, families of complex threefolds over an interval of this same space, H0C of the relative cycle space. So the relative cycle space um, is this right here. So if you have a family of threefolds over some base, a point in the relative cycle space is just a one cycle in, in one of the fibers with, with the natural topology on that. So if I have a locally constant function on that relative cycle space, I can restrict it to zero and I can restrict it to one. I get two elements of this group and, and their difference, um, I set to zero. So how do we understand what this group means? Well, any way we have of enumerating curves, gromov witten invariance, uh, pandey Pandit thomas invariance, gives you a homomorphism out of this group certainly gives you a homomorphism out of this group. I can just say, well, I'll enumer enumerate my curves using, you know, locally constant integer value function as the weight of the curves. Now, in many cases, Z of X is connected. And then I'm not saying very much, but if Z of X is disconnected, then you can make sense to put different weights on different components. Okay, and if your invariant is invariant of the deformation, then 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 your homomorphism descends these quotients. Other questions? There was a question in the chat. Uh, what is your model for Z of X uh, the space of one cycle? 
what's my model for z of x? Yeah, so I guess if algebraic, if, if x is an algebraic variety, then um, then it's then I guess it's called the Chow variety, the Chow variety of of one cycles in X. Um, and by the way, I'm always considering compact one cycles. That's that's very important. Um, so if X is affine, then Z of X is empty. Eventually, I want to use complex analytic spaces. I need X to be a complex manifold, not just an algebraic variety. So then. Um, the analog of the Chow variety in that context was um, constructed by Barlet. It's called the Barlet space. So it's just a space of it, it's a, it's a complex analytic space. It's a separated complex analytic space. It has no um, a virtual fundamental cycle that, that that we know of. So you can't use it directly to count the curves, but you can just forget down to it. Okay, so one 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 remark here is that I'm not assuming my my um, manifolds or my families are are proper. Any sort of so okay, that you might think that's a problem because otherwise, how do we? If you don't have this properness assumption, how do you enumerate? Well, it's, it's all the properness you need is encoded just in the fact that we're taking compactly supported functions. So if you have a non-compact component of Z of X, I'm not allowed to include that. So we only allow compact components of C of X, which necessarily sweep out or are supported in compact subsets of X. These maps here are both proper. Great. And the other thing I really have to say is that this whole idea was really inspired by the, the proof of the gopa kumarbapa integrality conjecture by Ian and Parker. So they proved a certain Linear combinations of Gromov Witten invariants are surprisingly integers, as conjectured by Gopal Kumar Bafa. And if you read their proof, you realize that they they proved something actually much stronger than that. What they proved is that every symplectic Calabi-Yau threefold is, in a certain sense, enumeratively equivalent to just a disjoint union of of local curves, curves with vector bundle over them. And Gopa Kumarbafa conjecture is known for those uh, by some deep calculations of Brian Pandey Pandey. And when I say enumeratively equivalent, what I mean is equivalent in this group. So, I, so this definition is somehow just a, a formalization of, of, of their work. Yeah, so, so there's, if you have um, some algebra, say projective threefold smooth X and the, and the homology class beta, you can just take the characteristic function of that homology class in the cycle space. That'll be some component and you apply these homomorphisms GW or PT to that element and you recover the, the usual invariant. Okay, so for, for the applications to, to, to be able to calculate this group, to be able to do anything at all with this um, machinery, you, you need to say something interesting about this group here. So Ian and Parker were able to calculate the group as I've defined it here um, in the almost complex setting for almost symplectic manifolds with almost complex structures. Now that's, a much more flexible setting than um, complex manifolds. And so it's not really possible to, as far as I can tell, to replicate their argument in the complex category and, and calculate this group. However, there's a modification of it that you can replicate their argument in. And that Enhancement of this group incorporates what I guess I might call higher deformation invariants. So, deformation invariance was this was the statement that if you have a one-parameter family, then the invariant associated to each of the two endpoints is the same. Higher deformation invariance just says that um, 
you have corresponding assertions for um, for families over any a base of any dimension. So, so what that what that leads you to write down is this this big double complex. Here you consider all families of Calabria threefolds over a simplex delta k. Now, what, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, delta k is a real simplex. You can just complexify the situation. So delta k is some polytope in Rk. Regard Rk as living inside Ck and take a family of complex threefolds over, over an open neighborhood of that, that simplex. And that's what I mean by a complex threefold over the simplex. So this complex here, it's supported in, it's like a, it's a second quadrant complex. So it's, it's homology is unbounded in, that's how it looks. Homology is unbounded in both directions. So I call the homology of this complex this. So how do we understand what this is? So morally speaking, imagine you have the moduli space of all Calabria threefolds, all complex threefolds. So that's some wildly complicated stack, but let's imagine it's some sort of reasonable geometric object. So it has a universal family over it and it has a relative cycle space over it. So for any point in the base, you can associate the space of one cycles in that threefold. So that's what I would uh, call, call this Z of the universal family over the moduli space of Columbia threefolds. Now there's this invariant that I'm going to write like this of a map. And roughly speaking, what it is, is it's homology of B with coefficients in compactly supported cohomology of the fibers. So, if you try to imagine what, what should that be, um, you'll, you'll end up writing down the complex, which looks basically like this. And in terms of sheaves, it has this if you like sheaves, it has this sheaf theoretic description. Okay, so so the the, the main result of the talk is that oh, we can we, we can compute this group, and it's quite simple. It's a free polynomial algebra on elements x, g, m, which correspond to A local curve. So a local curve is just, you know, a compact Riemann surface with a rank two vector bundle over it to make it three dimensional. And when you have a local curve, you try to enumerate cycles supported on the zero section. Now the zero section might not be isolated in the space of cycles, so that seems like maybe it's not so well defined. But if you work equivariantly with respect to GM action on the fibers, then then you can make sense of, of what it means to count curves, cycles supported in the zero section. And that count is, um, is, is, is give, gives an element. That, that way of counting corresponds to an element of this big complex. So G is the genus and M, yeah, M is the multiplicity. You count cycles of, of multiplicity M supported in the zero section. And the vector bundle is determined by being Calabria. Yeah. Okay. So we can't. We can't. I, I can't compute the whole group. Just the just the degree zero part. The degree less than degree zero part. Okay. So there's this well-known conjecture of Malik, Nekrasov, Okunkov, and Pandey, Pandey, relating Gromov-Witten invariants and 
Well, originally it was relaying Grubhoff with invariance and, and Donaldson Thomas invariance. Um, but there's a, a Donaldson, Pander, Pander, Thomas invariants are, are, are known to be related to Donaldson Thomas, to Donaldson Thomas invariants by, um, um, by work of Bridgeland. And so for, for, for this work, it's, it's more convenient to work with uh, Pander, Pander, Thomas than uh, the Donaldson Thomas. The reason is that well, the Donaldson Thomas invariants, they also count certain sheaves, but the support, roughly speaking, of the sheaves that they count is the union of a, a one cycle and a zero cycle. And so it doesn't, one would need to modify this framework a little bit too. I'm going to answer some questions from the chat. Um, what's special about working in three dimensions? Um, the special thing about working in three dimensions is um, is the dimension formula for the index formula for for a curve. If you have a curve in a in a in a threefold, then its index is I mean, the, the expected dimension of the multiply space near that point, near that curve, um, is just the churn number of the curve, the curve paired with the churn number of the target x. It's independent, of the, it doesn't care what the genus is. While in other dimensions, the genus uh, comes in. So, so the formulas are nicer with three folds. Um, and for cloud three threefolds, this, this churn number is always zero. So everything is just zero dimensionally, just counting, you just get numbers. Okay, so the, the corollary is that um, Roman Foot and Pande Pande Thomas satisfy this. Uh, MNOP conjecture, meaning you, know, you form generating functions and they're related by some change of variables, if and only if they are on, on the local curves. And, and it's known for local curves by, by work of Pandey, Pandey, and others. Um, okay. So, so the rest of the talk, I want to explain the, the proof of this. Um, yeah, so one thing I should say is that um, it's essentially this theorem is essentially a transversality assertion. So transversality is something which symplectic geometers study a lot and know very well. I and, and we know that for generic, almost complex structures, the moduli space of, say, of curves is, is, uh, is cut out transverse. It's smooth um, away from the multiple covered curves, at least. Almost complex structures are very flexible. You can make compactly supported perturbations. Complex structures are much less flexible, and so not clear you can can really um, do, do 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 anything um, but it turns out we can and the, the the key to doing it is let's see so if you have a closed cloud beyond threefold it might not have any deformations of the almost complex of, of the complex structure up, up to gauge maybe h1 is just zero but um, if you're just interested in a single cycle, single one cycle, and you're willing to throw away the rest of the curve, the rest of the target X, and, and just look at a small neighborhood of your cycle, then the complex structure has many, many deformations. Um, you can just take a, a divisor which intersects the curve transversely. And locally near the curve, you can use a vector field which um, has a pole along the divisor, 
to re-glue neighborhood divisor with everything else and use the, use the flow of the vector field to do the regluing. And you can get um, enough variations in the complex structure doing this to make that individual curve cut out transversely. So that is to say, we can get transversality for spaces of curves, but only locally on this space of cycles. And this, um, this big complex, basically a, a formal way of saying that, well, we're gonna decompose this cycle space into a bunch of small pieces and use different deformations for each of them to make them all transfers. Okay, so what, what exactly do I mean by transverse? Suppose we have a curve in a, in a threefold. And by curve, I mean um, just a one-dimensional subvariety. So I don't, it's, I don't keep track of multiplicities. So it's reduced. So a curve is called, a curve might be very singular. It always has a normalization C tilde that's smooth. And I can look at the map from C tilde to X. Now that might map may not be um, may not be an embedding. It might not be an immersion. It might have points where the derivative vanishes. It might have two points in the source which get mapped to the same point in the target. So each of those um, each of those properties um, I can consider as a constraint on the map. And I can cons consider just deformations of the map which preserve all those constraints. And if this deformation problem is unobstructed, then, then I'm gonna call the curve regular. Okay, the cycle is called semi-regular when its support is regular. So what does semi-regularity really mean geometrically? So well, first of all, what does regularity mean geometrically? If your curve is, Suppose you have a cycle and all the MIs are one. So then regularity means that the nearby cycles, well, sorry, not even that. So regularity says that you know, nearby cycles, which are realized by deforming this map and deforming C tilde are, are nice, unobstructed. That's a manifold of the, of the expected dimension. Now, I say only semi cycle, the, the, the prefix semi reflects the fact that in this condition that the support being regular, it doesn't tell you about the entire neighborhood of the cycle. If you have a cycle, the nearby cycle might add some genus at singular points. It might have the multiplicities change by having some multiple, some, something with multiplicity two split into two curves. And this notion of the support being regular doesn't say anything about those sorts of deformations. It just says, something about the deformations where all the MI uh, stay constant and the singularities don't acquire extra topology. So this is, this is a constructible um, subset. Right, and I can form the same sort of Grotendy deep group, but just using the semi-regular locus. Okay, except not quite because the sem semi-regular locus is just a constructible subset, so I really should use its interior. That's an open subset. That's a little bit more reasonable. So I take the interior semi-regular locus and take the group and group with that. Yeah, so this is, this is what I was saying. The dimension of the semi-regular part is just the dimension of the base. And that, that's a reflection of two facts, one um, semi-regular, meaning you're, you know, you're unobstructed. So the dimension is given by the, the expected dimension by the index formula. And the fact that we're in three dimensions and collabial to know that the, the, the expected dimension is just zero. Okay, 
Okay, so here. This group, the Scroton D group of semi regular cycles, and interior semi regular cycles, I should say, is just the, the free polynomial algebra on these, um, what I call local geometric local curve elements. So this is sort of, well, maybe this isn't a smooth space, but um, it's top dimensional cohomology which is the cohomology which is relevant to this group. It's called the cohomology of a space in, in dimension dim B is just generated by point Poincare duals of points, right? This is an algebraic variety. So it has some singularities, but for the top dimensional cohomology, we don't care. It's just point Poincare duals of smooth points. Those point Poincare duals of smooth points, it turns out, what, what are they? Uh, yeah, so generic point on the space is a smooth curve, just by definition of se semi-regularity. If you have, if you have a curve, um, which is regular in, in, in this sense, then you can smooth it out. You can find a nearby map from C tilde to X, which is a smooth embedding. So these geometric local curve elements, they really are uh, local, local curves in map. You're, you're counting cycles, they correspond to counting cycles, which are supported on some smooth curve, which is isolated. It's sim sort of the simplest enumerative problem you, you, you might encounter. Okay. So this is not a hard lemma, but the next thing we need to do is analyze this map here. We want to show that this map is an isomorphism. And this is this is a transversality assertion. It says that basically every cycle enumeration problem you could possibly care about is equivalent in this group, enumeratively equivalent to one which is transverse, one which is semi-regular. Okay, so how do we get trend? How do we get semi-regularity? How do we get transversality? The only way to, to do that is to enlarge the space of enlarge the space of complex structures, consider instead of considering a fixed target threefold, we, we consider a family of target threefolds. And as I already said, to get a rich enough family, you have to restrict to a neighborhood of, of, of a given one cycle. And what you do is you choose divisors, transfers to that one cycle and do something. Now, you have to be able to do this consistently over all the one cycles in your, in your cycle space. So if you have, and, and, and that's what this proposition tells you how to do. So if you have a, a family of three folds, some compact space of cycles in them, Um, then the idea is you can find divisors um, which puncture all those local divisors, which puncture all those curves, and they're disjoint from each other. So this is a rather non-trivial assertion because um, you think, okay, well, I'm just going to choose the divisors generically. For each cycle, I need to choose some divisors, puncturing it, puncturing it somehow, covering all, all the irreducible components. Um, now, maybe I just choose my divisors generically. But the base here is sort of arbitrary dimension. So if you have some divisors moving around, well, the points with, where they intersect the curve, they move around. And in a high dimensional family, they're gonna intersect. When the family is at least two dimensional, you're gonna have some points where they intersect. So that's, that's not good for getting them to be a disjoint. But that, the, the condition that they intersect is co-dimension two. So there's some 
you choose to divisors generically, we have some that works for most of the base. And then there's some bad part of the base, which is co-dimension two. And then you can, but then you can do induction by the proposition to them and by the induction hypothesis to have good devices over that bad set and then, and then extend. Yeah, and so the reason we want to do this is because given such a collection of divisors, we can now enlarge this family, take a family over B cross R, where in the R direction, we change the almost complex structure using, using the divisors. That, that shows that this comparison that doesn't make sense. Yeah, so what do I mean by generic transversality here? So there's a result in symplectic geometry or almost complex geometry that I already mentioned. So it's a generic almost complex structure achieves, make, makes, you know, makes all the non-multiply covered curves regular and transverse. But what's really behind that statement is the statement that for any non-multiply covered curve, there's always a family of almost complex structures which, which make that curve transverse in the, in the sort of family moduli space where you include deformations of the, of the base parameter chain, which changes the, the complex structure. So for the almost, here's the, the complex geometry analog of that. So if I divisor, I'm going to look at the vector fields defined, analytic vector fields defined in a neighborhood of that divisor, which are um, which ha may possibly have some pole along the divisor. So that's, that's this space. Where here, I mean, restriction of sheaves, not ring of space pullback of sheaves. But anyway, it's, it's just what I said, germs of vector fields along the, near the divisor with the pole along the divisor. So if you have such a vector field, you can, you can consider its flow, which will be a, by holomorphism on some, some neighborhood. And you can use that to re-glue, to re -glue, to get a family of um, complex manifolds where you re-glue neighborhood of the divisor to the complement of the divisor using the, using the flow of the vector field. And for, for, for instance, you know, you can get the entire moduli, local moduli of curves near, if you have a curve, if you have a Riemann surface, and you have a point on the Riemann surface, you can realize every deformation of that Riemann surface locally by, by this construction at that point, finding some vector field with the pole, higher pole at that point, and re-gluing the disk to the rest of the surface by flowing along the vector field. Question, since the, should the minus infinity actually be plus infinity since we want poles? Yes, of course it should be, yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, so maybe I should explain what these equivariant local curve elements are in the statement of the, the theorem. So, right, well, before I say that, though, are there any questions other than the ones in the chat? Okay, so let's consider a smooth curve of genus G and take a rank two vector bundle over. Now, if we want the total space to be Calabi-Yau, then that determines what the first Turing class of the 
of the vector bundle it should be. And the first turn class determines the vector bundle up to deformation. So there's really only one vector bundle that we could be taking here. And there's a tautological GM action, C star action on the total space of the vector, just multiplication. And we'd like to consider equivariant and numerative invariants. So any sort of reasonable curve counting theory arises from some moduli space and of cycles. And of course, GM is acting on E, so it also induces an action on that moduli space. And so you can consider equivariant cycles. And it turns out this, these equivariant cycles, the numerative invariants you get, um, if you follow, sort of unravel the Borel construction, you can see that those invariants are, are in fact a special case of um, invariants associated to, to families. So I can take this sort of partial Borel construction, right? B, C star is CP infinity. So I'll just take something over CPN. So this here is a bundle over CPN with fiber E. And if you take some, some map from, so okay, so what is ZEM? That's the space of cycles on E of degree M. Homology of E is just homology of the curve. So H2 is just Z. So this has a C star action, and C also has a C star action. So you can talk about the weight of a map. So take weight R equivariant maps. And if you do that, you can form this this cohomology class here, um, which if the zero set is compact, then um, if the joint zero set is compact, this product will be compactly supported. So it's compactly supported. And then you can enumerate, use that to enumerate curves. You pair, pair your virtual fundamental cycle with this um, with this cohomology class right here. So you get this this element. This is an element of the if, of the Groton D group that I that I wrote down. So this is a, an element of H star C Galapial cycles over moduli stack of complex three points. Okay, so I defined two ways of making sense of the enumerative theory of a local curve, right? Curves in Calabi of threefolds need not be isolated. So what does it mean to count cycles supported on a curve? One way is to do the sort of equivariant count restrict this very model situation and work equivariantly to impose compactness by the group action. Or the other way is, um, Take a transverse moduli space uh, where you have where just where the curve is just isolated, and it's not so hard to check that these are equivalent sort of modulo of the well, not the change of basis from the x's to the y's is upper triangular. So, an equivariant curve element equals the corresponding geometric local curve element modulo of things of um, smaller covering multiplicity. I might ask, are they the same? And I don't know the answer to this question. So a similar thing comes up in ENL and Parker in their work on the Gopal Kumarvafa conjecture. You can ask for, you know, what's the local, what's the enumerative theory of a local, of an isolated smooth curve in, a, in an almost complex threefold. And it turns out that enumerative theory depends on the, the almost complex structure in the neighborhood of the curve. So there's wall crossing. You, you go from one isolated curve to another isolated curve 
um, dimension of co-dimension one walls. And when you cross the, the enumerative invariance of the Gromov invariance of one curve uh, change when you, when you cross the wall. Um, but in, in, in the setting I'm talking about here where everything is complex. So you might expect that the walls are now complex co-dimension one, so you can avoid them. At the same time, though, these families I'm considering, the base spaces are, are real manifolds. I'm considering real families of complex threefolds. So there's a little bit of real geometry there, which makes it not obvious to me, at least, what, what, what the answer to this question is. So I think I think I've given all the ingredients in the in the proof of generation by the by the equivariant local curve elements. I, I think I've shown this group is is generated in non-negative cohomological degree uh, by these curves x, g, n. So it turns out there's a fun algebraic trick that to show that if they generate, they actually have to freely generate. So this group, I, I, I sort of skipped over this, but this group has a lot of algebraic structure. It's a co-algebra. So there's a, a multiplication map. So what does it mean to multiply to um, Calabia? This is the enumerative theory of two Calabia three holds. The multiplication is disjoint union. That sort of seems like maybe it should be a Anyway, that's multiplication. It's, it's not addition. Um, because the, the cycle space of a product of Calabria, the uh, cycle space of x union x prime is the cycle space of x times the cycle space of x prime. Um, What's the co-algebra structure? The co-algebra structure, the co-multiplication is pull back under the addition map. So z of x cycles on x is an abelian uh, well, it's an abelian monoid. You can add cycles. So that gives you a map from z of x to z of x times sorry, z of x times z of x to z of x. And um, you can pull that, and, and that map is proper. So you can pull back compactly supported cohomology classes. And that gives you a map from the cohomology of z of x to the tens to the cohomology of z of x tensor itself. So that's a co-multiplication. Um, and these fit together to form a co-algebra structure. So that gives you a lot of constraints on what um, the possi possibilities for the kernel are of this map. And essentially, you can prove that, well, the kernel doesn't have to be zero, but it does have to, you can sort of always find an element in the kernel which has non-zero Bromov-Putin invariant. And so, couldn't actually have been in the kernel. I don't think this algebraic trick is really necessary. I think it's probably just as easy to show that these generate that they, that they freely generate, but it's um, it's somewhat convenient. There's a, a few things you can skip. So I don't know how to keep track of multiple covers in this context. I mean, in this group that I define, you know, the, the M, M times a given cycle versus the cycle without multiplication by M, those somehow don't really talk to each other. They're completely different points in this cycle space. They talk to each other a little bit by these operations of multiplication and co-multiplication. But um, I mean, to be sp specific, if you really believe that the enumerative theory of a Calabria threefold is a disjoint union of generated by enumerative theories of local curves, then what you'd expect is that you, you can take this element. So what is this? This says, I just want to count all curves in X, say X is projective smooth threefold. I want to just count all the curves in X. Um, but to get something which 
you know ex exists as a count, we have to you know, just weight by um, by the by the homology class. So that gives you an element here. And associated to a local curve, this would this would be the sort of what, what you'd expect for a local curve. Right, a local curve has in homology class beta. It has its multiple covers. And if you have, and this would be just the sort of the number of, of curves of genus G in homology class beta. It's a virtual number, some integers. So Enel and Parker proved this for, for sorry, Enel and Parker proved. So if you take this statement and apply the Gromov with invariance to the right hand side and left hand side, then Enel, Enel and Parker prove it in there. In their paper, but using um, that uses um, almost complex structures, so they have a little bit more flexibility to to do things there. So that doesn't apply. So I'm I'm now making a statement at the at the level of the Grotendieck group, which. I guess I should say this 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 conjecture is almost certainly a theorem of of Ian Allen Parker if you replace complex threefolds with almost complex threefolds. Unfortunately, so it's it's not known how to define Ponder Pony Thomas or Donaldson Thomas invariance for almost complex manifolds. If it were, then we wouldn't need to do any of this work. We could just say Ian Allen Parker already already proved everything we want. Yeah, and I think I think that's all I have. Okay, well, great. Well, uh, thank you. Please join me in uh, thanking uh, John for his, uh, his very nice talk on his fantastic results. Are there uh, questions? Yeah, well, I have a, a question. Um, so one of the, the motivation for Gopakuma and Bafa was the original definition of Gopakuma and Bafa, which is a physics definition. And um, I'm wondering, uh, you know, now does your framework give uh, new insights to ways to really, uh, you know, prove the Gopakuma and Bafa formula in the form envisioned, uh, you know, so like a, in, so not uh, more than virtual fundamental class, but just invariance of, uh, of modulized spaces of, uh, of one-dimensional sheets with extra structure uh, you know, coming from physics. And uh, you know, there's, there's work in, in math you know, coming uh, very close to defining this, but uh, because E.L. Nell and Parker couldn't do this either. Uh, but, yeah. uh, it, it, it doesn't seem to me mm -hmm. so, I mean, So I mean, studying sheaves on local curves, and that you ha you have a support map, and uh, it, it doesn't fit into your picture. I mean, so so I mean, certainly. I mean, right. So so, yeah. I guess what this would help do is if you had a proposed definition, right, <laughs> that satisfied these formal properties, right, right, yeah. to prove that it satisfies all the enumerative identities you'd expect it to, you just have mm -hmm. to verify for local curves. Got it. Those okay. Okay. Doesn't really tell you anything about. Um, one one thing I should say, um, a little bit on a different note, though, um, this framework works for primary insertions. Does not say anything about descendants. That's still completely um, mm -hmm. open. It also only works in the Kalabiyao setting. The the fundamental content in in the in the whole statement is a transversality thing and that only works when kalabiya or or semi you should, you should be considering cycles with non negative churn number so for cycles of negative churn number i have no idea what to do um, it's possible i mean it, it doesn't seem that this group would help so much because it seems uncomputable it would be 
ready to figure out a sort of modification of this group that would help, but I don't know. I'm, I'm yeah, not sure what to do for that. Yeah. I have another question, but I'll pause to see if anybody else uh, has thought of one. Anyone else? Well, I was going to ask so something even more optimistic and, and maybe ill-conceived. Uh, does this decomposition into local curves have any hope of extending uh, to some sort of decomposition of the derived category on on a collabia, um, which of course contains objects on four cycles and the collabia itself? Yeah, this. I mean, it's a very interesting. This is an interesting suggestion. I, I, I make some some piece of the derived category. I mean, what I could. Hmm. I, like maybe you'd consider a, a K theory group, of categories where you allow to say the derived category is equivalent to maybe objects supported on a sub variety plus objects supported on the complement in some, in some sense and maybe you can consider the maybe you could compute the the class of the derived category in that in that thing Questions? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got one. Uh, hey, John. Um, so, you, you you said in the paper, and I think you also mentioned it, that that computation using this scheme seems really difficult. That, that you're not seeing um, a benefit <laughs> for computation. Yeah. And I, I get that. I get that. But to my in my experience, both personally and just observing the field, um, often you know, co-dimension one vibration structures like K3 vibrations are a crutch that both physicists and mathematicians have used to get their hands on computations uh, of, of these invariants. Um, so I'm just wondering, big picture, if you just decide to impose the existence of a K3 vibration on your Calabia threefold, mm -hmm. what does your general theory tell you? I mean, yeah, you're going to have to deal with invariants that are fibrous and, and not. And, and so... There, there are some subtleties right there, but um, yeah. So, so like, would you would you want to like fix that structure and then sort of ask for maybe a Groton D group of cycles in things equipped with a specific vibration? Yeah. So the game we usually play is we piggyback results off of the K threes usually lattice polarized K3s. So they have lots of nice structure. And the actual structure of the Calabia threefold is, is really a relatively simple vibration over P1 by these, by these K3s. And so, for example, if the K3s have really high Picard rank, I have some results where we just, we just reproduce the Calabia threefolds up to birational equivalence and their moduli spaces out of basically a Hurwitz scheme kind of argument. You're just, you're just mapping from the base of the vibration to modular curves. Um, and so I, I have a sense that that this kind of piggybacking that works really well for getting explicit modular expressions for these DT and, and, and mm -hmm. uh, GV invariants um, might just, you know, be reformulated as, as something natural in your, in your formalism. Yeah, that, that would be great. I mean, there's so many, there's so many computations. Really, all of them could you could ask are, are lift them to this group, and then and then you can compute that. I mean, that then you can compute any 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 enumerative invariant out of um, just formally from that. Yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm getting at is is that that you know it, it's never as simple as oh the enumerative invariants lift directly from the K3 case because there usually aren't any invariants <laughs> there. You know the magic is in is in the structure of the vibration, um, uh, or its mirror degeneration. So, so I, I don't know. It's it's something, perhaps optimistic, but 
but um, at, at least if you were going to add some adjectives to your Calavia threefold, the first adjective I would add <laughs> mm-hmm. would be fibered. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Other questions? Uh, did you uh, care to speculate on what information might be contained in negative degrees? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I mean, degree zero is pretty good, right? <laughs> you like what the, yeah, I, so I wouldn't know how to compute anything there. I mean, so because well, when you, when you have, once you have families of curves then they start to acquire singularities and. Sure. But I guess what I meant is that even if you couldn't compute degree zero, it, it, these, this, these are enumerative theories, right? Even if you couldn't compute it, is uh, just at a thousand yeah. level, just uh... yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean that that's that's somehow where the you know enumerative invariance of high you know high. Higher dimensional, higher dimensional spaces would work, I guess. I, um, I, so some thought. I, I, I think this also applies to like the Grom, like the Grom and K theory or stuff like this. But one, one has to think a little bit carefully. Um, you can sort of upgrade this Grom D group to like a, take the space level refinement instead. Just don't mm-hmm. take cohomology with the spectra and apply some exotic cohomology theory. Um, I think the main result applies immediately to that case just because you vanish in these degrees and here. So as long as you're like a connective spectrum or something, so you don't. Anyway. Thank you. Other questions? Well, if not, let's uh, thank John again. And our, our next colloquium uh, will be on November 13th, uh, Davide Gaiato. Hope to see you then.